We've got a whole lot of cruise news this week from a massive delay on one of Royal Caribbean's brand new ships and news from Norwegian Cruise Line and Carnival, as well as some laws set out by the EU of what cruise may look like. Well, ahoy there, cruisers. Welcome to this week's cruise news roundup, and let's kick off with Norwegian Cruise Line. So yeah, we got a lot of flack for this one, but finally they are the last major cruise line to completely cancel Alaska for 2020. I am not shocked. Not shocked at all. <laughs> we told you that this would happen months ago. There was no way it was ever going to happen just because of a number of things, including Canada closing its ports and laws around cruising where cruise lines have to go to another country. It was ridiculous that they were still taking bookings for this because it clearly was not going to happen. And this has made us really sad because they know this wasn't going to happen. It was so obvious. So they were knowingly taking cruise bookings for something that wasn't going to happen. We got attacked for saying this would happen. But hey, we don't like to say anything, but we told you so. We got lots of nasty comments saying it's not going to be cancelled. Oh, why are you saying that? You're wiping out. It was absolutely going to be cancelled. Every single other big cruise line had already pulled out. Canada was saying no. Alaska were even saying that you're going to have to have a COVID test before you go into the ca uh, country. It was never going to happen. No, never but hey, happen. it feels like they were maybe doing that just to um, get more cash revenue. Yeah, which is not a good way to run a business. So bad work, Norwegian. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Moving on from Norwegian, let's take a look at the cruise news from Royal Caribbean. As we expected, the new Odyssey of the Sea ship has been delayed, but we did not expect the delay to be this long. All sailings have been cancelled until April 2021. That is an almost six month pushback. Absolutely gutted. We are so disappointed because personally our uh, sailing has been cancelled. This is our third cruise by Royal Caribbean to be cancelled. The delay is down to shipyard delays. There's been a few fires that have not been widely reported in the media, but there was a few fires during construction that broke out on the ship. It was reported that the fires were on decks two and eight. So these fires, along with reduced staffing at the cruise uh, shipyard, means that it has been delayed for six months. Absolutely good. I know. I was so looking forward to that, but six months, that's yeah. a long time. But on the flip side of that, at least it's a realistic day in the future. Absolutely. You know, they're not keeping you doing it by week by week. They're saying, look, six months in the future, that's when the ship's going to be ready. In other Royal Caribbean news, Royal Caribbean have confirmed that there will be buffets still on Royal Caribbean ships when they return sailing. They're still working on how this is going to happen and how these buffets are going to work. From crew serving you individual portions to even having your own set of tongs, these are some of the options that Royal have been working with. But they have confirmed that they buff the buffet will be there, it will return with some small modifications. So that's good news, at least we're not going to see the buffet moving. But again, we still think it's going to be the Holland America way of doing things. So crew behind glass screens serving individual portions so you basically tell a crew member yeah oh i'd like that piece of cake please and they pass it to you on a tongue that seems the most sensible option and possibly the most easiest to implement although it does obviously have a drain on crew resources it just seems like the most sensible option rather than giving each member of the crew, uh, each everybody having their own tongs or other things like that. Yeah, that having your own tongs is absolutely ridiculous because yeah. you can put them down and they could touch something. Yeah, that, that's absolutely not going to work. Exactly. So everyone's just walking around with tongs hanging around the neck <laughs> just in case they get peckish. <laughs> and in other good news from Royal Caribbean, they have repatriated 95% of its crew members now, which is a great achievement. Yeah, but it's a great job by Royal Caribbean. Definitely one of the highest amounts of crew repatriated. They're expecting to have 97% of of all of its crew members repatriated in the next few weeks. So that really is fantastic because we know they've been putting that at the forefront of everything. So it's really good to see them taking uh, care of their crew. So next up, EU returning to cruise. Basically, the EU has released a 49 page document worth of interim guidance for the cruise industry's return. 
don't worry, we're not going to go through all 49 pages. We've took out the little bits we thought are interesting for this little bit. This should allow public health authorities around Europe to support a return to cruise. So some of the measures they have picked out are a 1.5 metre social distancing, along with special markings to control distancing, things like things on the ground to keep people apart, especially during boarding and disembarking, as this is the part of the cruise where most people are very close together. But even in bars, restaurants and entertainment areas, you're going to see the social distancing markers. And where distancing cannot be guaranteed, plastic screens should be used to separate guests. This could include busy bars and restaurants. We're not quite sure how they're going to do that. Are we going to see big plastic uh, perspex sheets between tables? Seems a bit strange, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, take Royal Caribbean, for example, the Royal Promenade gets very busy in a short space. Are they going to have a screen down the middle for yeah. one side people going one way, one side people going the other? Is there going to be screens in between you and the next guest in the main dining room? It's crazy. And some bad news as well. They're saying face masks should be worn in cruise terminals by passengers and crew and in all indoor spaces on board the ship. This is really disappointing as it's a vacation, not a hospital. Do you really want to be on a cruise wearing a mask, especially where it's warm as well in the Mediterranean, yeah. where it can get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit? It's, it's, it's going to be impossible to wear a mask. Yeah, we're not saying their recommendation to wear a mask is wrong. We're just saying it's not practical in terms of being on a vacation to be wearing a mask all the times yeah and that's going to put you off booking and in a little contradiction to what royal caribbean saying they are saying self-service options such as buffets are to be completely off limits cruise lines should also have a written contingency plan for onboard outbreaks as well as testing and reporting cases as soon as they happen now this one is interesting there should be special precautions to high risk groups those over the age of 65 or those with underlying conditions such as visiting a doctor to assess fitness to travel with different group activities and things like that so does that mean that people over 65 or that those with health conditions in Europe are going to have to visit a doctor before to get a fitness note. So there should be daily monitoring of crew and passengers, including temperature checks. So as you can see, cruising is going to look very different, especially in the EU. So places like France, Spain, Italy, obviously the UK doesn't is not included in that anymore. So this makes us think that cruising could actually be quite a way off in Europe because some yeah. of these things are going to be very hard to implement. Imagine having social distancing and lines and plastic perspex and and gloves and masks on a cruise it's going to be weird yeah is that even practical for some of the bigger ships think of some of the big msc ships the royal caribbean ships that are sailing around the mediterranean can they actually implement what they're recommending? Yeah, and obviously in, the, in news as well, the EU has just temporarily banned visitors from the USA because of rising concerns of COVID there as well. Oh, how crazy is that? That's a bit disappointing, I have to say. They're very strict. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and obviously they're just doing what they think is best to keep us and everybody else safe on board the ship. But let us know what you think. Do you think that these guidelines are necessary and will it put you off booking? We, def know. we definitely think they're necessary, but they are tough. So next up, we look at has Asia been a waste of time for cruise ships? Many of the ships that were built for Asia are returning for seasons in the US and Europe. You remember only a few years ago, Asia was the big hotspot for cruise ships with Royal Caribbean and Norwegian creating mega ships built specifically for the region. But now these ships are sailing elsewhere, such as Ovation, which has moved to America. And Australia as well. Yeah, and Norwegian Cruise Line's Norwegian Joy received a massive makeover to make it more Western friendly. Yeah, so as you know, the Norwegian Joy and ships like Spectrum and Ovation were specifically designed for a Chinese and Asian market with food venues, uh, signage and everything in Chinese and, yeah, and Mandarin. And, entertainment yeah, and the yeah. general layout of the ship and what the shops offered on board really catering to the Chinese market. But there seems to be a massive backtrack. Expert Stuart Sheeran of CruiseGuy.com said, China cruising didn't turn out as many cruise lines had, had hoped. China is the most expensive and difficult place for cruise lines to operate from. 
After giving China a try, several cruise lines have either reduced or completely pulled out of the market and redirected their ships to more profitable destinations. That's crazy. And ironically, China could actually be one of the first places where cruises resumes. Exactly. With yeah. Genting Cruise Line. And the thing is, when we check online how much cruises are from that region, they are the cheapest in the world. So they're obviously not selling. So in other news, for Celestial Cruises, they're a Greek cruise line, which which, uh, basically sail around the Greek islands. They've cancelled all cruises to at least March 2021. They've cancelled because of the uncertainty surrounding everything. Could this be a sign of things to come? Now with Royal Caribbean pushing a ship back to April, now these guys pushing it back yeah. to March 2021, could everybody else follow suit? Yeah, and this cruise line, they're a small cruise line and they really are in the thick of it because like you said, they just sail around the Greek islands. So if they can't sail around the Greek islands, they don't have um, a product to offer, I guess. Absolutely. In other news from Carnival Corporation, there's been massive cuts to the Carnival teams in the UK, unfortunately, including some of our good friends and people that we've worked with. It is such a shame, but last week, close to a third of the total shoreside workforce was made redundant. Uh, and that is a big blow as well to the city of Southampton where Carnival is based. Yeah. Uh, that's where their operations are in the UK. But finally, some good news. MSC Cruises held a coin ceremony to mark the first stage of its build of the brand new cruise ship class, the World Class. Now these mega ships hold 5,400 passengers. The Europa, the first ship, will make it one of the world's largest. So it will also be the largest first ship to be powered by liquefied natural gas also known as LNG and these cut emissions massively so a big well done to MSC it's about time that cruise lines are starting to use better fuels for the environment so these ships are due to launch in 2022 and it's going to be the first of four ships for MSC we are super looking forward to it these ships look a little bit like um, a mix between Meraviglia and maybe the Oasis class ships from Royal Caribbean they look huge but they look yeah. very cool thank you so much for joining us this week we hope you enjoyed all of our latest cruise news the good news and the bad news please make sure you hit that subscribe button we are bringing you all of the latest cruise news every single week and guys we know what we're talking about all of the things that we predicted are definitely happening and also check out our teespring store there's links in the description below where you can get one of our cruises ben and david t-shirt and thank you so much for all of our patrons as well you can find out about becoming a patron in the comment section below we've got loads of goodies like a podcast every two weeks as well as some videos our captain of the week is elliot so thanks very ahoy. much elliot. ahoy that's it till next time happy cruising